Hello folks, DragonKeeper19600 here, and um, okay, so now that I've seen the episode, I've calmed down, thought about it, watched the episode again, thought some more, and finally I think I can come up with a coherent sort of review uh, to lay down some of my thoughts, observations, whatever about this episode. So um, this is a pretty big episode, and this is the first Adventure Time episode review I've done. So I will try to cover all the points I wanted to cover and try to make this quality and not just me rambling about nothing. So um, I wasn't sure where to start at first, and I guess I'll start with this. Um, this episode already got a bad rap because that Betty did not get um, a half hour um, instead was relegated to 11 minute. Which to be fair, the writer said that he was totally okay with the 11 minute running time for Betty suited the episode better because it added a sense of urgency and like a racing clock to it that it wouldn't have had if it had taken a full half hour. So there's that. So people misblaming this episode. But I did have a fear going into it that maybe this didn't have to be a two-parter, that maybe they were going to drag it out, that it was going to move slowly. Now that I've seen it, I can definitely say this had to be a two-parter, okay? <laughs> the entire half hour was used and utilized fully. This this could not have been told in the 11-minute time, time limit that other episodes get. It needed to build up the stakes, to build up the atmosphere, and finally to that final confrontation, because it wouldn't have been a complete story. It would have been just another Adventure Time episode, and it wouldn't have been really that notable, but with that... Uh, two episode slot they could like fill up more time and, and, and let the story um, breathe a little bit more. So there's that. Um, I really love this episode. It's one of those that kind of blew my mind a little bit and the only time I can remember my mind being blown like this is it's kind of a huge comparison but it was um, Bioshock Infinite when I finished the game and got to the ending and I just sat there like <laughs> you know, like, what? I'm not saying that this episode has an ending quite as shocking or anything as Bioshock Infinite, but I'm just comparing my mind state of just, like, total blank. I can't really think coherently now that I've seen this sort of mindset. So, um, uh, let's start with our title character, Lemon Hope, <laughs> the adorable scamp. Okay, so I, um, I think... We were sort of expecting Lemon Hope in this episode, and because of our experience with Women Too Old, to be like this perfect little angel child who, sort of like, I guess, Cosette in Les Miserables, who despite growing up in um, really awful, awful circumstances, um, turns out to be like the sweetest angel child, totally selfless, totally sweet, and Lemon Hope was not that, and I think that is a sign of the always real and always on... <laughs> on target Adventure Time writing, because how many kids do you know who come from troubled households who are just perfect angels? I mean, like, nah, that's not our idea of what a troubled child is. They, you know, they get rebellious. They're used to, like, survival and caring for, their own se caring for themselves and keeping their emotions closed in. So, um, yeah, Lemon Hope came across as kind of hostile and kind of selfish sometimes, but I think that was a mark of a more complex character than just the perfect angel child that I at least was expecting. I can't speak for anybody else. But, like, he's just a kid. And I mentioned this in the reaction vid, but he doesn't want, like, his initial reaction, and it's a perfectly human reaction when someone says, you have to save us, it has to be you. And the normal reaction is, why? Why does it have to be me? Why can't somebody else do it? I don't see why I have to be saddled with this all of a sudden. None of this is my fault. And um, I think if you remember an Avatar, another very excellent show, um, Aang didn't want to be the Avatar and ran away because he couldn't face responsibility. When you throw the fate of people's lives on little kids, of course they're gonna freak. You know, it's. It's not really fair. I still don't get quite why Princess Bubblegum didn't just have Finn liberate Lemon Castle, but maybe after too old she decided, you know what, Finn, just sit at home and, and don't talk to anybody ever again. <laughs> you you disappoint me. So, uh, yeah, in the half-hour special, they went they took Lemon Hope from being kind of a character who was more of a plot point than anything. Like, he was the objective of too old. We need to get this kid out of location A to location B. And, um, yeah, he was a plot device. He was a MacGuffin. 
But in this, he's a fully developed character. He's um, a little selfish, a little whimsical. He wants to be free, but he doesn't really have a good grasp of what that actually means. And, um, but he does feel guilt and he does feel responsibility, but he goes to deal with the responsibility mostly so he doesn't have to feel guilty about it anymore. <laughs> Which, I, that's um, interesting. I don't think I've seen a character like that. It's like, I have to go back because I realized I care about them. It's like, no, I have to go back so I don't feel like crap all the time. <laughs> Which is maybe a more real way of doing it, if not a more idealized one. Um, I was going to say something else about Lemon Hope. Um, oh yeah, let's talk about those nightmares Lemon Hope has because I think that's part of the reason that the people who made this episode were so excited about it and needed the time to build it up because these nightmare sequences are really striking. In fact, this whole episode has this really strong atmosphere that I really like that I haven't seen in any other uh, Adventure Time episode or any other cartoon recently that I can think of. It just feels really heavy and important, especially in these nightmares. So I think there's like four or five, maybe I'm forgetting one. And I watched the episode a second time and noticed a few, few things. First of all, his first dream, uh, Lemon Hope wakes up in a nest, right, with wings. He flies out of the nest and he goes to the store and he tries to open it, but there's nothing on the other side. The last dream he has, he um, hears the door thumping again. He kind of walks through what looks like Lemon Castle. Then he flies up. He goes through the door, flies upward, goes up, and he finds a nest, and there are birds inside, and he sits in there. So I guess the nest represents, like, his home. So he, at the beginning of the episode, him leaving the nest is obviously leaving the nest, getting out of the place where he grew up, which he's, you know, he's smiling as he does it. He's happy to do so, and he wants to go somewhere else, but there's nothing else to go back to. This last dream he's able to go through the door that he wanted to go through, but it just leads him back home. And if you notice when he's standing there, he's not smiling. He doesn't seem content with being back home, even though it's more colorful and there are birds there and he has company and it's a happier scene. He, um, he was just led back to where he started, but it's a kinder, warmer place, but I guess he doesn't really belong there anymore. It's sort of like, you know, the tale of Odysseus when he comes back home to, and, after his huge adventure and everybody, his wife and son seem like strangers to him and after the grand adventures he has, it just seems kind of boring, like he doesn't belong there anymore. Um, everyone around this kid has made him into a total outsider. <laughs> Princess Bubblegum, Lemon Grab, also Lemon Grab, all the kids in Lemon Castle, Finn a little bit. Everyone has been setting him up. I sort of... <laughs> one thing I kept thinking was actually that terrible Secret of Nim movie. Uh, the sequel. Not... The Secret of Nim movie is good, but, like, the crappy sequel that Don Bluth had nothing to do with. I was thinking of that, where, like, the kid Timmy keeps building up. It's this great messiah, and you're going to do great things. And this kid is basically, like... Uh keeps, like, people keep building him up and they get disappointed when he lets them down and that, it wasn't portrayed as much of a problem, which is a sign of how shitty the movie was. Here was absolutely a problem. By building him up, they've messed him up and they made it so he can't really go home because he feels like he doesn't belong there and he feels like he wants to do his own thing because, you know, all his life he's been told what to do really violently. Um... Yeah, and I also, I think the bit why he was so obsessed with freedom is because the kid lived in a bathroom. <laughs> he's tired of being confined. That's all he's known. He wanted, he wanted to get out. He got out of one cage into a different cage. A much nicer cage with sweets and stuff. Princess Bubblegum's good at setting you up in really nice cages, but it's still a cage, and he still felt that way. Even if she didn't mean for him to feel that way, he did. So, went a long tangent. Okay, I think there are two other nightmares. Okay, one was Lemon Hope as the horse with Lemon White on his back. That, I think, was kind of obvious. Lemon White was falling off. Lemon Hope wasn't paying attention, and his feet get stuck in puddles that appear to be bubblegum, chastising him in Lemon Grout's voice, which I think was cool. And I like... And the other one was the really freaky one where he, he's like a marionette, and he comes across Lemon Grab eating a cow. 
and the cow starts shouting at him, run, Lemon Hope, run! And like he's trying to run, but he's not getting anywhere. And, just, and he looks up, and the marionette is actually controlled by another him. That, that imagery is like, that's worthy of David Lynch. <laughs> that's really freaky and really deep. And I love how Lemon Grab is portrayed as like this object of just terror for this little kid because obviously how wouldn't he why wouldn't he be? I even remember like back in too old when like Lemon Hope is the first to see that Lemon Grab is coming after them when they run out of the castle and he says, Mistress, look, something scary is happening now. That's how he talks about his dad. Something scary is happening now. Eesh. <laughs> So when he goes to confront him at the end, it feels really big and heavy. And you feel like there's a, that this kid is in serious peril because you've seen what he's become and the things he can do. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, why a cow in the dream? Why is he eating a cow? I, uh, I thought about this, and I thought it might just be Adventure Time randomness. Like, let's have a talking cow. Why not? <laughs> but also, um, the cow's color scheme is black and white, and of course... The first one, black, lemon grab, wears black. Second one wears white. Um, I guess they lived in harmony for a while until fat grab, as I call him, destroyed it. And I think that's what him eating the cow was supposed to symbolize. Maybe I'm reading too deep into it, but that's what I saw. Okay. Let's talk about Flannel Boxing Day. Flannel Boxing Day is so obviously Princess Bubblegum. I don't know who the heck she thinks she's fooling. Like, at all. At all, okay? Her skin is the same color. She, um, at one point, she speaks German. Like, Flannel Boxing Day, like, says something in German. Like, you're only prisoner in blah, 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 and he says German words. Princess Bubblegum is fluent in German. Um, it's, it says so right here. And if you notice in a few other episodes, there's scenes where she'll just, like, burst into German just randomly. And it's only for a bit, but, yeah, she's um, bilingual. And another thing, he, like, compares... He, like, talks, oh, I can't cross because of all these treaties and pacts and stuff. And then he compares it to science. He uses a science metaphor and a really complicated sounding one, too. And he's pink and he's following him around. And he's just friendly and he says the same things Princess Bulgum does. So, your question probably is, what's up with the voice then? That's clearly a dude's voice. Well, if you notice, he's got this mustache. And the mustache, to me, kind of looked like the one that Finn had in Davy. And, in fact... Flannel Boxing Day's voice sounds exactly like Davy's. Like, if you listen to them, it's the same, hey, buddy, let me fix up your porch or whatever. <laughs> you know? Oh, thanks, Finn. I'm calling the police. <laughs> you know, that voice. It's, that's what Flannel Boxing Day sounds like. So Princess Bubblegum somehow, like, the mustache spoke on its own at the end of the episode. Whoa, what is that? It's the fridge. I'm just smart. So, um... Yes, so I think Princess Bulgum somehow got a hold of the mustache and put it on and somehow got the voice. That's all I can think of is how that happened. But I, I think that's uh, what was going on. Excuse me, I need to see what's making that noise. I'll be right back. I'm back. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so where was I? Oh, yes, let me help. <laughs> all right, so... Talk about Lemon Hope, talk about Nightmares, talk about Final Boxing Day, talk about pacing. Uh, let's talk about Lemon Grab. <laughs> because honestly, that's what we're all looking forward to, isn't it? More Lemon Grab. So, after Too Old, I noticed two degrees of people. On the one side, we have people who say Lemon Grab is evil and will haunt my nightmares forever. He should burn in hell, preferably with something acidic. Okay, that's group one. Group two, which I'm a part of, which is Lemon Grub is actually a more interesting character than I thought, and I'd like to see him get some more complex development. There are these two mutually exclusive groups going into this episode. People in this group mostly seem to be disappointed that the Lemon Grub episode was a two-parter because that meant we had to see two parts of Lemon Grub, which means that they will have more nightmares, which is bad. Um... People in this group, me, were really ecstatic about this episode. Because yes, we need to see what happens in this castle. We've lost nights of sleep over it. I literally had a nightmare about this last night. We need Claire, we need some kind of closure on this. And um, honestly, I have a hard time telling what we're supposed to feel toward Lemon Grab because at the end, 
it seems like both of them, one and two, have been stitched together into one being. And I'm not sure what that will mean from now on. Because the character is going to appear again. Let's be honest. He's too popular to just be dismissed like that. I mean, they've got all this marketing stuff and they've been building it up. We're going to see him again. Most likely. Not definitely, but most likely. Um, so, like, if it's both of them stitched together... What does that entail exactly for, um, like, how does that work? If it's both of them, do they have two separate minds or just one? If they have just one, which one is going to be the dominant? Or are they just going to meld together? Will they have each other's memories or will they not remember anything at all? Is one of, is he going to remember eating himself? Because I feel like that would mess him up. A lot. Hello, Colton. Or is it going to be like a bad cop, good cop thing where it switches between them sometimes? Like Blitzwing? Or is it going to be more like... Honestly, I sort of thought... Of, first thing I thought of was maybe like um, Elf and Lied where like Lucy, the psychotic mutant killer, when she gets a knock on the head, she loses her memory and becomes really kind of... Mm, impaired and she like can't really say anything except the word new and she just kind of trips all over herself and can't talk or she's incontinent and like all this stuff so I was like I was thinking like is it gonna be like that for a while like he's just not gonna his just mind is like essentially gone until he eventually recovers and Princess Bulgum says that he will recover they or he or whatever <laughs> I'm a little confused about this since she said their brains and bodies, plural, his brains and bodies, I guess she's assuming it's like two people who are one individual somehow. I don't, I don't know. Don't do that, Colton. They can't see you. <laughs> um, so uh, I'd like to see that be addressed. And I also, I think I said this earlier, but I'd like to see addressed how Lemon Grab ended up like this in the first place. Because that wasn't answered. And honestly, nothing, his characterization up to this point, like, we saw a progression of him going to evil, but it wasn't like this. It was like that. <laughs> it was just like a sudden drop. Um, the thing is, this seems to have all started over a spat over a toy. And I'm not sure how that's possible or sensical, because... I'm not sure. <laughs> he seemed like he was getting better. So what happened? Was breaking a toy really enough to send him careening over the edge or was something else at work? I would like to see this answered. I, that is what I would like to see because I don't feel like it was answered. Um, Lemon Grab as a dictator though, it was both horrifying and really, really funny. <laughs> and I love that Adventure Time is one of the shows that can do that really well make character make a character or situation or something that's horrifying but funny simultaneously like you're laughing at it but you're also mentally screaming at it which is great um and lemon grab even as a dictator is a total dork and i think that's part of the reason i love the character so much because like when he's like got like typos in his propaganda video or like that that dumbass dude with the smile when he holds up that one lemon guy like that's <laughs> hilarious and even when he's like at the end when he's all patchwork and raggedy i i want to call that lemon grab patch grab he's still cute when he's just sitting there and he his eyes are going in two different directions he doesn't know where he is or what's going on or what his what color the sky is he doesn't know anything he's just Apparently he'll recover. I don't know how you recover from that. <laughs> um, so one thing I did notice is that um, Lemon Grab was introduced way back in season three in the episode Too Young when Princess Bubblegum was 13. Why was she 13? Because she broke into little pieces and had to be reassembled. Here at Lemon Hope, we end with Lemon Grab breaking into little pieces, both of them, and having to be reassembled. Except where they, the doctors were able to reassemble Princess Bubblegum to be cute, little, and petite, and pretty much in perfect health, except five years younger, 
or 300, I'm not sure how that works. Lemon grab put back together looks like a horrid abomination that curled out of your deepest nightmare. I honestly am wondering if maybe Princess Bubblegum just wanted to sew them both together to see if she could. <laughs> like, she's kind of had some weird turns lately. Like, yeah, let's just sew them together, whatever. I love when she's like sewing and Lemon grab at, no, Lemon Hope asks, um, is he going to be like that forever? And she's like, like what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Is there a problem? Um, yes, there is, princess. So, um, yes. By the way, let's talk about Princess Bubblegum because um, Princess Bubblegum has a bit of a has had a bit of a dark streak lately. What with the uh, sort of major egotism about her inventions and the whole my right is to rule thing and crashing a wedding and throwing everyone in the dungeon and the thing with James and this and that and like she's just been pushing and pushing and pushing her already admittedly strained morality as far as it will go. Maybe farther. But like here she seemed like genuinely sweet and like caring. She was kind of patient with Lemon Grab when she made with Lemon Hope, I keep getting them mixed up. When she made a mistake, she immediately tried to backpedal and apologize. And like, she, you know, she's, it's obvious she cares about the Lemon Earldom and wants this problem fixed. But there's the whole sewing them together thing, which is weird. And um, yeah, she kind of ruined Lemon Hope's life. Also that too, by mounting this pressure on him that he didn't want. I mentioned this, I think in the video, but Princess Bubblegum is not good at caring for the emotional needs, not just of others, but of herself. She's got to kind of put that aside. So when she's dealing with her son or when she's dealing with Lemon Hope or with Finn, she tries to push aside emotional stuff because she feels like it's impairing her in her royal duty. So like caring for a kid's emotional needs wasn't as important to her as constantly enforcing, this is your destiny, you have a job to do. Don't let us down. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but it, she was shown as being genuinely caring. She like fixes up his room for him. But again, I can't help but wonder if that was maybe for an ulterior motive. Like if she wasn't just fixing up a room in Lemon Castle just to be nice, but like maybe because she wants him to rule or she wants him to do something like she's trying to use him. In a way, Princess Bubblegum kind of makes me think of Dumbledore. Because Dumbledore was using Harry. He used people. He had an end goal and he had a plan set in motion to get to that end goal. And he was going to use people like little chess pieces to get there. But I think also like Dumbledore, Princess Bubblegum cares about the people she's using. Like she isn't doing it heartlessly. She does care about them, but she has to put her feelings aside. Like when Dumbledore said, do you see Harry, the flaw in my glorious plan? The flaw was that I loved you too much. So, um, yeah, it's like that. I don't know if Princess Bubblegum loves Lemon Hope, but she obviously cares about him, but she still wants him to do this thing that she can't do because I guess she doesn't want to get her hands dirty politically. And um, I think she put she wanted to put Lemon Hope back at the Earl Dome, maybe so she could get Lemon Grab out of there and, like, get him under something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, but... Um, yeah, so Princess Bulgum's actions seem good-hearted and, and sweet, but I don't know. <laughs> it's gotten a weird point. I uh, recorded a video earlier that I had to delete where I basically watched, like, all the Lemon Grab episodes that Cartoon Network showed up to this one. They, like, showed every single Lemon Grab episode before this one. Like, an hour and a half of episodes. And, like, I remember at one point... One of them was another five more short grables where Princess Bubblegum says that Cinnamon Bun can't sleep with a nightlight and she takes it away. And I was wondering, is that why Cinnamon Bun says that Princess Bubblegum is bad? Because she took his nightlight? It would be hilarious if it was for that, no other reason. I, Knowing Adventure Time, you don't know. It could be for something more serious or it could be genuinely, I wanted my nightlight. Because like people tend to take small things really seriously like writing Mopey song and having centuries long hang up over fries, for instance. Um, so, yes. Okay, so, um, something else I wanted to talk about. Let's talk about some of the unsolved mysteries of this episode. And I don't mean just, like, 
what's Lemon Grab going to be like now or why did he turn evil in the first place? I'm talking about like other things that actually aren't related to the lemons. For instance, what was up with that fire? When Lemon Hope shows up in the town before he reaches the dock, the town is on fire. Why? I can't feel like, I feel like that can't be there for no reason. He says, oh, it's warm and he moves on. It's like, it's only for a second, but it's so troubling. And then when he gets on the ship, he stows away. We don't see any of the crew members. They don't, apparently don't see him. Then at one point while he's sleeping, he wakes up and he hears, I think it sounds kind of vaguely like a roar outside. Things tumble around. When he wakes up and goes outside, it looks like the ship has been stranded in the desert for maybe days, maybe weeks. Like everybody's gone. It's halfway buried. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> I want to know what that was about. And I feel like maybe... This is just a wild guess. Totally might not happen, but I feel like it might be clarified in the next episode, which is Billy's bucket list, because they talked in the preview about some sort of big secret. So it's like, maybe the stuff that happened in this episode is going to be related to the next one. Because, like, I remember at the beginning, when they're in the classroom, BB says, uh, okay, Finn, class dismissed, and Finn goes, woo, and runs out, and isn't seen again until the very end of the episode. So maybe Billy's bucket list was happening off screen. I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas around right now. I don't know what's going on. So yeah, what made that ship crash? What was up with that noise? And what was up with that fire? And what is going on? Another mystery. And this is about the ending. Because I think maybe, even if this episode had nothing else going for it, wasn't funny, wasn't thought-provoking, Lemon Hope wasn't an interesting character, just the ending would have made this episode worth it because that's that's one of those things that just stays with you. It's poetic, it's beautiful, it's sad, it's a little frightening, but um, it ends with a smile, so I guess it's okay. Um, but yeah, Lemon Hope in a thousand years in the future, old and derelict, pro apparently surviving on a life support system, that's, it took me, took me a Tumblr read to realize that was what that was supposed to be. He's on a life support. He's walking through what looks to be a future candy kingdom that's been destroyed. It looks like the aftermath of the Mushroom War, like when Simon and Marcy were going through the city. It looks just like that with the cracked windows and the derelict. Like there isn't an obvious sign of destruction, just of decay. So I wonder if like maybe the, um, was the city destroyed and the people killed, or was it just abandoned? Because I didn't see any bodies anywhere. So do they just abandon it? And if so, why? Why is it so lifeless in just a thousand years? Did another war, did another apocalyptic war really happen? I really hope that's not the case, but that's what it looks like. I also like how Finn's tree is like way up, like past the, past the cloud line. You can't even see the top of it. That's, um, that's really powerful. <laughs> Like, Finn and Jake may be gone, but their treehouse, or at least the tree that the treehouse was in, remains. And, um, so, that, this is the first song, I think, Princess Bubblegum has sung. She sang in, um, What Was Missing, but she didn't have any words. She just kind of gave out, like, this kind of vocal, and it sounded nice, but, you know, there were no words. This is the first song that she, like, had lyrics that she sang, and it was a solo thing. And they wrote the song without Rebecca Sugar. And it was okay. and it was beautiful, actually. It was really touching. I actually felt like, I didn't cry, but I felt a little misty-eyed because it was, it kind of hit close to home, you know. Home is an important place. And wandering your whole life, not being unable to go home because you feel like you don't belong there is, it's really rough. Um, so he walks through the Candy Kingdom looking like he knows exactly where he wants to go, goes back into the Lemon Earldom, which is empty now, but still in pretty good shape, walks through the empty hallways, goes to his room that Princess Bubblegum made for him a thousand years ago, lies down, and goes to sleep at last. That is just so beautiful and so sad. I just... God, it just hit a note, and... um. I think it's really, this kid lived in a bathroom and he, finally someone takes the time to 
for whatever motive that Princess Bubblegum might have had, someone took the time to set up a nice place for him to call home, and he couldn't even go there until the very end of his life. But at last, he finally had the thing that he never truly had, which was comfort and belonging. But it was after everybody was already gone. I tell you what, if you have abandonment issues, this episode has probably messed you up. <laughs> oh my god. So, I think I've thrown a lot your way. There's probably more I wanted to say, but I think I've said a lot. In a nutshell, this episode really said a lot. It raised some questions that I hope it answers. Not just about Lemon Grab, though I really hope we see Lemon Grab again, because I still need closure on that. But, um... I think Lemon Hope's part of the story is done. I want to know what happened with the ship. I want to know what happened with that town, or if that's important. And I want to know what happens in the season finale next week, Billy's Bucket List. So this has been quite a ride. This season, which has been so, so long, is almost over. And I can't help but feel that the best of it has already come and gone. And it came and went tonight. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Billy's bucket list will just blow me out of the water. I have no idea what's going to happen. So next week, Billy's bucket list and the end of the season. Stay tuned, folks. This is Dragon Keeper 19600 signing off.